to this week's Movie Math, giving you an in-depth analysis of the box office for the weekend of August 3rd, where nobody impressed but nobody embarrassed themselves either. While the Aurora shooting in the Olympics continued to thwart the Dark Knight's efforts to rise at the box office, Warner Brothers finally got some good news this weekend. Not only was Nolan's flick able to hold on to the number one spot, but its weekend-to-weekend -weekend drop slowed down to just 41 percent, more in line with the Dark Knight's box office performance. The Dark Knight Rises also continues to do well overseas, so well that it's now almost guaranteed the pick will pass the billion mark, a crucial sign of success for today's blockbusters. And since The Dark Knight basically comes in at a cool billion, the trilogy looks to end on a high C note. Ironically, Sony's total recall opened at number two with 26 million, which is about what the original opened with, but in 1990 dollars. In today's dollars, the original total recall would have opened with around 47 million. Total Recall was one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's biggest box office hits, and it's also one of Colin Farrell's. But unfortunately, it doesn't take much to stand out on Farrell's box office resume. And for all you pointing to the success of Horrible Bosses, remember that Farrell had just a cameo in the film, and most of his scenes were cut out. But while Total Recall is the success for Farrell out of the gate, so was Miami Vice. It was another remake that initially sparked, but then quickly fizzled. And considering that most audiences seem to wish they could go to Recall to wipe the movie from their minds, it got a 5.5 here on Beyond the Trailer, it looks like this new Total Recall will also be riding the fall at the box office. Now in third place, it was indeed the dog days of summer for the Wimpy Kid franchise. Underperforming with just around 15 million, hindsight is 2020 that moving these kid-friendly flicks from March to August was a bad idea. You can be sure they'll move back to spring for the fourth entry, which there will likely be as this third entry costs just $22 million to make and is sure to do big business in rentals and sales down the line. Cheap movies. Even when you lose, you win. As for the rest of the box office, audience apathy for both of last week's newbies, The Watch and Step Up Revolution, continued, with both flicks dropping about 50% in their second weekends. But on the flip side, audiences continued to be won over by Ted, which had the lowest drop in the top 10, just 25% in its sixth week. In fact, it's now crossed the double century mark, pretty darn good for a flick that 20th Century Fox passed on. Now they're likely wondering how much longer Seth MacFarlane will continue to focus on ensuring their network's animation domination now that the silver screen is calling. Watch your back, Judd Apatow. There's a new funny guy in town, and I dare say he's even raunchier. How blue can comedy go? Hey, in Tinseltown, all that matters is the green. Meanwhile, another box office highlight or low light is The Amazing Spider-Man, as Spidey seems to have run out of web fluid. The pick has dropped to number eight, and it's now clear it won't reach 300 million domestically, or maybe even 275. That's a far cry from Raimi's original trilogy, both here in the U.S. and worldwide. Yet as Sony is quick to point out, it's performing far stronger than Batman Begins, which eventually led to one, and probably two, billion dollar picks. And considering the positive response to The Amazing Spider-Man's cast and special effects, it's likely the same fate awaits this relaunch comic book property as well. Even more promising, the screenwriters behind the excellent Star Trek reboot, Alex Kurzman and Robert Orchi, are on board for the sequel. But last week, the sequel did hit a snag as it was reported that Fox Searchlight might keep director Mark Webb in their web as he's contracted to make them another film for back when they agreed to distribute 500 Days of Summer. They already gave him a break to make the first Spider-Man, and obviously the studio is eager to see a return on that favor and their initial investment. However, Sony is moving full steam ahead with their Spidey sequel and have already staked out a prime release date, May 2, 2014. The first weekend in May has arguably become the most profitable release date of the year, and interestingly, a Marvel movie has been kicking off the summer movie season since 2007. Warner Brothers in DC, you need to jump on May 1st, 2015 pronto. Maybe a Justice League movie? Anyway, the rumor is that Fox Searchlight might give Webb yet another reprieve if he promises them two more films instead of one. Fox Searchlight is a great distributor, and it's always nice for a director to mix some small films in with the big ones, so the deal will almost certainly work out. But what about The Amazing Spider-Man 3? Hmm, maybe Fox Searchlight could kick Webb's debt up to the mainstream suits at 20th Century Fox and leverage it for a rebooted Spidey and rebooted X-Men or Fantastic Four crossover? We can dream, can't we? As for this coming weekend, three new picks hit theaters. The Bourne Legacy is expected to lead the pack but do just half the business of The Last Born, and could even potentially lose the box office vote to the campaign. Meanwhile, Meryl Streep looks to do business as usual with Hope Springs, on track to open on par with her other recent rom-coms. And that's the weekend box office. I'm Grace Randolph and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.